$28,000 has become a critical price point for Bitcoin. Why is that the case? What the heck is going on? Who are the buyers here? Who are the sellers here that we need to be paying attention to right now at this key area of price for Bitcoin? And what price points do we need to be keeping an eye on in terms of thinking where the next direction could be? First, let's look at the charts. At the time of recording, Bitcoin was still stuck in the range that it has been trading in for basically the last three weeks and it has failed to put a daily close above $28,500. The critical barrier for us right now, we need to see a daily close above that. Now a double top scenario could possibly be forming up here if we retrace and break support down at 26,700. That would give us a technical downside target of around $25,000. I've got a, a buy order in personally at $25,300 just in case, which is where there is of course a key area of price support that we want to flip into resistance and of course which also coincides with where we find the 50-day exponential and simple moving averages all lining up together at. But what I really want to see happen for bullish continuation in the short term would be for Bitcoin to put in a weekly candle over the orange line. That is the key area for Bitcoin and an area which Bitcoin has failed to defeat for the last three weeks. But that's all just short-term stuff. If we zoom out a little bit we can see that things look a bit different is worth keeping in mind that the current breakout that we're seeing here for Bitcoin actually represents a massive titanic level shift for Bitcoin price momentum. You see we broke out of a year-long falling wedge. We retested it for a bullish technical check and now we see BTC consolidating for its next move whether that be up or down. Now before we talk about the buyers and the sellers I wanted to let you know about my weekly newsletter. It's called Wealth Mastery. And every single issue is absolutely just jam-packed full of alpha on altcoins, DeFi, NFTs, technical analysis, the latest news, and much, much more. If you're busy and your you know, life's crazy, but you still want to stay up to date with crypto, this is for you. So join our over 60,000 weekly readers and you can sign up for free. For free, yes, free. Use the link down below in the description. So check it out. Okay, now let's talk about who's selling Bitcoin here in particular. We're going to talk about the break even crowd. A little reminder that around 600,000 Bitcoin has been transacted right around that $28,000 level. Now, this is a key area because some of those people might have bought bought the bottom back in 2021. They're holding all this time. They're not finally just like, I'm throwing in the towel, man. I'm done. I'm walking away. This is too crazy. I want my money back. It's a lot of coins that people could be behaving with in such a way. It makes 28K a sticky level to try and nail down for that weekly close because every time we get up above it on the daily, we get whacked back down. And of course there's other sellers too, like the US government. The government still has around 31,000 Bitcoin left to sell from the Silk Road confiscation that they have said that they will be selling this year on Coinbase. Not an insane amount of Bitcoin by any means, but still a big seller and a lot of Bitcoin that will come into the market. But the real sell pressure, of course, is to watch out for the macro trade. OPEC Plus, for example, they're cutting oil production and that could cause oil prices to spike up again. That could and then in turn cause inflation to spike up again, which could cause interest rates to go even higher and then stay higher for longer than previously anticipated. If all of that happens, that could cause markets to enter a risk off attitude, which would likely bring asset prices down. Translation for all that, number go down for crypto if all that happens. Now macro continues to prevent various risks and dangers to the prices in the market that we as investors should definitely be keeping an eye on. OPEC plus is just one of the many things. And this one I'm going to put right here in the middle, this next one here, right between the buyers and the sellers, because this chart right here shows that whales holding over 10,000 BTC for the last few months and selling into this rally. However, every other cohort of buyers from the guy buying 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin as weekly paycheck to the dudes who are buying a thousand Bitcoin at a time, they're all buying Bitcoin right now. So who's right? Everyone or the few mega whales? Time will tell, of course. Now let's discuss who else is buying Bitcoin. First, there's Binance, although it should be pointed out that Binance is actually kind of done buying Bitcoin and also Ethereum and BNB coin right now. You see, they took their billion dollar cash fund that they had set aside post the FTX collapse to support different industry players and stuff like that. And they're actually converting it from BUSD into Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the BNB coin. That buy pressure was definitely a factor that we can 
bring in that was probably helping keep the market a bit afloat over the past few weeks, bring in those extra buying power. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, let's not forget old mate Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy just bought another 1,045 Bitcoin. Cool, those guys, man. Next, of course, we have the macro buyers chasing that potential gold narrative. You see the CEO of Van Ecke came out and said that he believes that Bitcoin and gold are both at the start of a multi-year bull run. Though keep in mind, this is still like the boring and uncertain phase of the bull run, right? The early days, Everybody's still afraid, is this the real deal? Are we just gonna go back down and everyone's gonna lose all their money again? Confidence remains low, right? It, although it's, I find it so ironic that confidence will be high at new all-time highs. And yet, most people remain afraid to buy when things are on the cheaper side. Then of course, we have the macro buyers who are chasing really just the broad risk on attitude that's been brought on by the last few weeks of central bank monetary stimulation from the USA and China and Japan who are all adding to their balance sheets and buying bonds and all that kind of stuff. Of course, we have the perspective of the Federal Reserve slowing or stopping interest rates in the near future. Heck, even the tech heavy NASDAQ just hit a bull market officially, right? Which is pretty interesting considering everything that's been going on. French stock markets hit new all time highs as well crazy stuff. Then of course we have soaring retail adoption and banking adoption. And while this story may not be as big as like BlackRock or Fidelity, we just got news that Post Finance, the fifth biggest bank in Switzerland, with 2.5 million customers, you know, that's, that's a lot of people, right? They're now offering Bitcoin to their clients. Another day, another bank adopting Bitcoin. Look, the Bitcoin halving is getting closer by the day. Another supply shock is coming in a year's time. Well, I personally don't expect a new all-time high before that. Happy to be proven wrong, right? Anyway, that's just whatever might happen this year. Whatever happens in the short term, actually not such a big deal. Think ahead a year or two years from now, where are we going to be? Right now, there are a lot of buyers for Bitcoin at these prices. That's something we know for certain, right? And not many sellers at this point. So will we get that weekly close above 28K or is the fear of the market still too hard? For me, it's just a question of when we're going to cross 28K, not if we're going to cross 28K. New highs will come. I still think we could see 48K this year as a potential top target for 2023. And then, of course, new highs post the Bitcoin having maybe a new all-time high late 2024, early 2025. But we'll see how everything plays out over the next year or two. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now, and I'll see you next time.